Hello friends again most welcome to our YouTube channel today we are going to see about the IR spectroscopy in last lecture we have done with the laws of UV visible spectroscopy that is Lambert's law and Beer's law if you have not seen this video then please visit it I will provide the lecture link in my description so let's start with the IR spectroscopy basically infrared it is an electromagnetic radiation and by using this radiation we are going to analyze our compound basically the functional groups are determined by using the IR spectroscopy and what is the functional groups for example alkane alkyne or ketone etc these are the functional groups to determine this new functional group in our unknown compound we are using the IR spectroscopy because in unknown compound in drug discovery and development uh, you are going to develop a new drug and you, you don't know what are the new compounds in your drug so to determine these functional groups are we are using the IR spectroscopy the IR spectroscopy comes under the absorption spectroscopy so it is also known as vibrational or rotational spectroscopy let's see the basic requirements for the performing IR spectroscopy means while you are performing the IR your compound should have the dipole dipole movement it is an essential requirements for IR spectroscopy if your compound does not have the dipole dipole movement then it is called as IR inactive compound let's see the ranges of IR spectroscopy there are three ranges first is a near IR mid IR and far IR basically while performing practical we use the mid IR because it is a very good for performing practical let's see the ranges uh, first near IR it, it is ranges from the 12,000 to 4,000 centimeter inverse mid IR it is and from 4,000 to 667 centimeter inverse and far IR it is and from 667 to 15 centimeter inverse let's see the principle of the infrared radiation or IR spectroscopy the principle of IR spectroscopy it is based upon the vibrational spectra means all the compounds which are IR active it will give the IR radiation and after getting IR radiation it will show a specific vibrational spectra for the specific functional group this is an principle of IR spectroscopy let's see the instrumentation of dispersive IR spectroscopy here is a radiation source from radiation source the light beam it will be goes to the two mirror and reflect into the two beams means one beam it will goes to the reference and second beam it will go to the sample from this reference and sample then it, uh, these light beams will reflect from the these two mirrors and goes to the chopper from chopper it will goes to the monochromator from monochromator this polychromatic light it will be converted into the monochromatic light from from this monochromator it will goes to the detector means light energy it will be converted into the electrical signals from the detectors then these signals are amplified with the help of amplifier and then our final uh, response it is get recorded into the recorder so it is an instrumentation of uh, dispersive IR uh, so in your exam you have to draw this diagram for better mark let's see the working of dispersive IR as I said that the radiation source split into the two beams then one one beam it, it is and for reference and one beam it is and for sample then both the beams are reflected and goes to the chopper from chopper it will pass to the monochromator then from monochromator it will it will be detected by the detector then amplification and record it is a simple working of the dispersive IR let's see the radiation source which is going to be used in the IR spectroscopy first is a nurnus to glower it looks like that here is a reflector it is a platinum wire head and it is a glower and it is a platinum head let's see in detail about the nernest glower how it works this nernest glower is a combination of oxide like zirconium ytterium or argonium so this nernest glower having the halo rod which is made up of this oxide and the diameter of this rod it is in from 2 mm to uh, 2 mm and length is 30 mm and it is also required a heating up to 1000 to 18000 degree celsius means 1800 1, degree celsius to get an IR radiation let's see the next radiation source in the IR spectroscopy second is an uh, global it looks like this here is an silicon rod is, uh, is used which is heated up to 1300 degree celsius and here is an water cooled brass tube is there in exam you have to draw these diagrams it is a necessary in uh, your exam to draw the diagrams for uh, your respective radiation source or the detectors let's see the uh, about the glover glover so glover it is a rod of silicon carbide and diameter of this rod is in 4 mm and the length is 50 mm it also required a heating to produce the IR radiation heating it it may be done to the 1300 degree Celsius to 1700 degree Celsius let's see the uh, uh, monochromator basically why monochromators are used the main function of monochromator is to convert 
convert the polychromatic light into the monochromatic light the monochromator it may be either prism or either gratings yeah, in a monochromator you have also want to draw this uh, diagram of the prism or grating for better marks let's see the detectors which are go uh, going to use in the ir spectroscopy first detector is an bellometer the detectors are the devices which convert the light energy into the electrical signals as i said that the bellometer it looks like that here is an uh, galvanometer is used the absor absorber element is there an ir radiation uh, incident uh, in in that part from here we are going to provide the current to the device so let's see the working of our bellometer it is a thermal conductivity detector and it is depend upon the change in current flow so when ir radiation come on the surface of bellometer means when ir radiation it will goes here then it will leads to increase the temperature and uh, increase in temperature will leads to increase the resistance means ultimately current uh, current will be changed and it will be recorded in the recorder let's see the second detector which is used in ir spectroscopy second is a thermocouple detector uh, the uh, thermocouple detector de 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 detector it is uh, looks like that in in that the uh, two wires are used wire a and wire b from here ir radiation it will pass it is a one hot end and it is and it is a cold end so let's see the working of thermocouple detector in thermocouple detectors two different wires are used at one end the wire uh, ir radiation will be attacked means at the one end the ir radiation will be attacked and due to ir radiation temperature will be increased and due to temperature increase the resistance will be increased and ultimately current uh, current flow will be changed and it is going to be recorded as the working is very simple so uh, third uh, detector it is in a thermo thermistor in thermistor uh, the fused metal oxide mixture is used so when ir radiation come on the surface of this thermistor the temperature it is going to be increased and this fused metal oxide mix mixture will be increased and due to this increase in the temperature and resistance will be decreased and ultimately current flow will be changed and it will be recorded basically the common things uh, will happen in all the detectors as the temperature increase the resistance decrease or change in the resistance will happen and the current flow will be changed and it will be get recorded into the detectors the thermistor it is uh, look like this and here is a window for the uh, ir radiation it is an active element here is a compound element and it, here we are going to provide the currents so and uh, Golay detector it is also used in the IR so if uh, in MCQ uh, uh, you asked that uh, what are the detectors used in uh, IR spectroscopy so there are four detectors uh, first is an bellometer second is an thermocouple detector third is an thermistor and four is an Golay detector let's see the FTIR that is an Fourier transfer uh, IR spectroscopy let's see the principle of FTIR the FTIR it is an based on the principle of interferometry and from this interferometry the interferogram will be obtained which is a complex signal occurs in a wave like pattern so interferogram signal is plotted between the intensity versus time and the mathematical calculation will be done from the Fourier transformer so FTIR it is an spectra will be generated between the intensity or frequency let's see the instrumentation of the FTIR here is a radiation source in which we uh, it goes to like this and uh, where we are going to use the beam splitter from beam, beam splitter the light it, it is going to be passed it is and stationary mirror means it is uh, going to be not uh, move it is a fixed mirror and these are the uh, few movable mirrors which can be adjustable here is a sample which is going to be analyzed then detector is there and interferogram uh, which is uh, used for the calculation then computer and it will and the, our response will be recorded from the recorder though so, so this is an uh, regarding the FTIR and five marks uh, note will be asked on the, this question that is write a note on FTIR with the instrumentation and its advantages and application so let's see the advantages of FTIR it gives the better resolution than the IR spectroscopy it is in uh, the sample scanning speed is a very high uh, than the IR spectroscopy reduce the error which are occur in the IR and FTIR gives the better accuracy as compared to IR means IR spectroscopy have the some uh, errors but the FTIR it is a perfect one for the performing the practicals so let's see the applications of the IR spectroscopy it is in for identification of 
functional group elucidation of organic compound quantitative analysis of number of organic compound study of covalent bond in your molecule detection of cis and trans isomers in the mixture of compounds to study the presence of water and in the measurement of paint and varnishes hope so you got the idea about the ir spectroscopy and the fdir in next lecture we are going to see the sample handling in the ir and various vibrational uh, spectra in the uh, ir spectroscopy so thank you for watching our video and stay connected with our channel if you have not subscribed our channel then please subscribe i will provide all the mfm lectures in upcoming days thank you